Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God once again. I'm sorry I stopped abruptly. I had got visitors, but uh, let's continue as with our topic, the believer's daily, uh, daily life. So in these few series, we're going to study or we are going to pass through. We are going to see how should a believer live his life? What should a believer do in their own lives? Should they relax because Christ did everything for them? Actually, some people do hinder the grace, the gospel of grace, because they say, oh, they always speak bad about the gospel of grace because they think that for us, we should not pray. We should not do anything that if you enter into Christ, you just relax and sleep and no, it's not like that. As Christians who have known the truth, there is a life we have to walk. There is a life, there is a, a style, there, is, there are things we have to do as believers. It's not a matter of sleeping, of relaxing. So, as believers, we won't see what should we do in our daily life. But be, before we go any further, as, as I said, it's a believer's daily life. So we are in part one. So we're going to see who is a believer first of all. We have to first explain who is a believer. Because we can't say a believer's daily life and we forget who is a believer. Mm, we can't just leave it like that. So please, I just beg you, please share. Share to your friends. Let your friends see let your friends also receive this truth. Um, as I stopped abruptly, I was reading in the book of Titus, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible said, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Yes, we are saved by grace, not by works. This journey of salvation, oh, you to receive this eternal life, you did not work for it. The Bible says it's a gift of God, not by works, that anyone should not boast. Why did God, de why, why did God decide to give you this free gift of life? That, so that the day you reach in heaven, the day, uh, Sister Jack, thanks for joining and everyone, uh, so that that day, on that day, you will not boost in your energy. But everyone will say, glory, glory. You, everyone will say that our God deserves the honor, deserves the glory. Everyone on that day will be praising God for the free gift of eternal life. As I told you, verse 13 says, I've already told you the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. But this grace comes with something. Some people do abuse this gospel that saved them. The gospel that saved you, it's the gospel of grace. There is no any other gospel that saves people except the gospel of God's grace. That's why it's called the good news. The gospel is called the good news because it, it was all done by our God. And it was just handed to you to accept the free gift. That's why it is called the good news. So, many people abuse this gospel of grace. And they say this gospel of grace is a permission to sin. That's what people say. That we who preach the gospel of truth, we, we allow people to do sexual immorality. We allow people to drink alcohol and do every sin. That's a lie. But the Bible, Bible says, as I told you, I, I'm in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse, 12, verse 11 and 12. The Bible has said, that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Listen what the grace does. The grace does this. Uh, teach, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. 
and to live a self self controlled upright and a godly lives in this present age so the grace of god does something People who abuse the gospel of grace, it's the only gospel in the word of God. The gospel of grace is the only gospel. There is no any other gospel. And any gospel other than the gospel of grace or the good news, it is called, according to Apostle Paul, it is called another gospel. So, it's not a gospel at all. We have only one gospel, and it's only the gospel of God's grace towards man. Hallelujah. I told you, um, I'm known as Pastor Stanley from True Revelation of Christ Mission. Our church is found in Matuga, a place called Sindo. So please join us every Wednesday. And every Sunday, Sister Winnie, thanks for joining also and others. Please, thanks for joining. Just, I request you, share this live in our groups, please. Just share. Share so that everyone may receive this free gift. Every day at 9 o'clock, at 9 a.m., I'll be having this live about the believer's daily life. So we have to know, how should, how should believers go on with this life of salvation how should we go on with christ is it true what they say that the gospel of grace permits sin is it true but the bible said this gospel of grace it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions so that's the gospel we preach the gospel that tells you no the moment you accept christ the no has come in because Christ himself is a no to evil. So the moment you accept Christ, it means no has come and yes has come. Hallelujah. The Bible has said the grace, the gospel of grace that we preach, it teaches us to say no to all ungodliness and worldly passions. To live a self-controlled, upright and God in lives in this present age. Hallelujah. But before we go any further, as the, as the title is, The Believer's Daily Life. We have to first of all understand, who is a believer? Who is a believer? Because uh, uh, many people say, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. So we are going to define different things. We are going to see who is a believer. Who is a born again and who is a Christian first of all before we take off in our daily life? How should we live daily, daily, daily? Because people say, me, from the day I knew the truth, I just came to know that Christ did everything for me. So even I feel like I can't pray. They don't even pray. They don't read the Bible. Thanks, Sister Winnie. Believers daily life. Please, I ask you, share this life. Let our brothers and sisters know this truth. Share the life. Let all people join. At least, let's, let them know the truth. Because the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, that we shall know the truth. The truth. This truth sets people free. Let people be. Let, uh, please bring this chance to the people. Let the people be free. Let the people be free. How can the people, how can the people of God be free? They can only be free not by being prayed for, not by being uh, uh, put oil on them, not by fasting, not by doing anything, not by giving. You will not be free by giving, but you will be free by knowing the truth. Hallelujah. So, first of all, we have to know who is a believer because... We say the believer's daily life. So who is a believer? That's the first question we have to tackle. So a believer is a person who had or who hears the gospel and accepts it. Is a believer. Someone who hears the gospel. This gospel is not just you don't you come to Christ, you will be saved from hellfire. That's not that's not the good news. 
The good news is not that come to Christ, you will get a car. Come to Christ, you will get a plot of land. Come to Christ, you will get a life partner. Come to Christ, you will get money. That's not the good news. The good news is Christ himself. The good news is this. If, if this is preached to someone, we preach Christ who came and became man. Because remember, the Bible says the wages of sin, the wages of sin is death. So whoever sins deserves death. All of us deserved death. But because God, let me first, let me say again. Because God does not just forgive sin, but God punishes every sin. You cannot be a sinner and just do something and you escape. The only reward or the outcome of every sin is to die. So, because of our, father, our forefather, okay, because of Adam, all people sinned. When they sinned and they died. So, as they were to die completely, somebody called Christ came and said, Instead of Stanley, let me die in his place. In his place. Instead of Winnie, let me die in their place. So, this is the gospel. So, when Christ came, he suffered for you. He suffered your suffering. He cried your cry. He died your death. In his death, when he rose again, when he rose up, you rose with him. That's when, that's when you, you received this life. Our life is in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So, this gospel is preached about death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus in your place. If someone accepts that, he is called. So, simply the action of listening and believing you. If you listen, you accept immediately you are a believer. The day you, so we have to explain some, what of being born again? Who is this person? That very time, if you accept Christ, if you believe Christ, if you believe the message, you become born again. How? How? That comes to the Father, except is drawn. Anyone who comes to God must first of all believe that he exists. This is a believing that God puts on you and as you listen, you believe. As you believe built of God immediately so a person who has just received Christ now now sorry for the name let's bear it I know everything will be fine yeah the moment you accept Christ you are born again how so as you are born again first of all as me I'm a son of Nathanael but who changes so I know your father is there in Masaka, you have your father in Mubende, but in the day you accept Christ, you are born by God. That's what John, that's what John chapter 1, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, let's read John chapter 1 verse 12. So simply, let's first read, let's first of all, before we go to John, let's read um, John chapter 3 verse 3. So I said, the day you accept Christ, you said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Accept a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again. I know, I know. One day you were given birth to. But this is another new life. The day you accept the gospel of truth, you are being born again. Hallelujah. You are, this is the new rebirth. This is the rebirth. I know you were given birth to some time later or some time back. You were given birth to. But now this is 
a rebirth. And this time round, it's not man giving birth to you, but it's God himself, the creator of heavens and earth. That's why the Bible has said, uh, let's continue. Jesus said, Jesus answered and said unto them, uh-huh, Jesus, let me read NIV. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born again when he's old? Nicodemus asked. Surely, Jesus, surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born. So this is Nicodemus asking more about this rebirth. So Jesus said, no one will go to heaven unless he's born again. So there was a man called Nicodemus. He asked, how can this happen? Can a man enter? So I'm explaining who is a believer. This believer is someone who is born the second time. I know you have your own birthday. You have it. But this time around, you are not given birth to by man. Hallelujah. So in chapter, in verse 5, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the spirit. So here, there is something that disturbs people. The Bible has said, unless someone is born of water and of the spirit. So here there is a problem. I know sometime back I talked about baptism. So someone... Uh, my friend is called, I don't I remember the name, but he said, ah, what of this water? What of this water? Uh -huh. So, the Bible said, no one will ever see the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and of the spirit. So, we have to explain, first of all, before I go further, what is this water? There is this water. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read together, please. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ah, Ephesians 5.26 Ephesians 5.26 The Bible says uh, Ephesians 5.26 So we are going to explain water Before we go ahead Because here the Bible said And Jesus Jesus answered I tell you the truth This is the truth No one can enter the kingdom of God Unless he is born of water and all the spirit. So we have to explain this water. Because people think this water is a swimming pool water. Or lake water. Or sea water. This is not a physical water. This water is Christ himself. Hallelujah. This, Christ, this water is a word. Word of God. It's the water. The Bible is talking about. Let's, let's read. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Ha, let's start from verse 25. Because Christ, uh, Paul, was talking about husband and wife. Yeah, so he said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That he might sanctify. Who sanctifies? Christ. Uh -huh. That he might sanctify her. Christ. That he might sanctify her. Having cleansed her. By the washing of the water with the word. So the water, the washing of the water is done by the word. So the washing of the water is the washing of the word. What washes you? Oh, it washes white as snow. I think you always read, uh, sing that song. The word of God, oh Christ. All the blood of Jesus, all is the same thing. It washes you. This is not about water. This is what I always drink. No, this is a different kind of water. So, here we've seen that Christ washes people with the water. And this water is the word. So, that is the person who is born again. So, here let's, let's go back to this uh, uh, verse 5, we are in John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. 
No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and of the spirit. Simply, as we read Ephesians 5, verse 26, we can say, No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born by the word and by the spirit. Who is the word? Because here the Bible said, Christ Jesus washed the church with the water, which is the word. The water, it's the word. And you know the word, in the beginning, oh sorry, I know I'm going, uh, next time I'll put VPN, don't mind. I know the mistake, but it's okay, let's continue. Tomorrow everything will be fine. So, sorry for the network. So, we have seen now the water. This, the cleansing water, it's the word. Hallelujah. So Jesus told Nicodemus, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and of the spirit. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. I know. I think you were born sometime back. Your birthday is in May. What, what? You were born by the flesh. That's your father and mother. So by that time, you were flesh. The Bible said, that which, that is verse 6, that, well, let me read, uh-huh, flesh gives birth to flesh. Your father gave birth to flesh. Flesh na kaima. Eh? Flesh winnie. Eh? Flesh rose, you were flesh, fresh Stanley. So the Bible has said, uh, Flesh gives birth to flesh. But the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Eh? Gives birth to spirit. So, there was you of flesh. The day you accepted Christ, there is another you of the spirit. So, that's why we say uh, your spirit was regenerated. You were rebirthed. Hallelujah. Va chapter... Chapter 8, chapter 7 says, He came to witness. Eh? No, 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 I'm in chapter 3, sorry. Chap verse 7, he said, You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. So we are still looking. Who is the believer we are going to, say, to explain in the next parts? Who is this believer? So he said, You must not be surprised. At my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows whatever it pleases. You hear its sound. But you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So that, so it is with anyone born of the Spirit. So we believers, we are born of the Spirit. No one can explain this rebirth. The Bible has said, Jesus told us that the way the wind blows and you can hear its sound, you can feel it, but you don't know where it comes from, know where it is going. That's the way. You cannot explain this born again person. It's, he's a new person who has never existed before. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse, uh, verse, verse 17 says, 2 Corinthians, let's read there. We are explaining this new man. This born again man, this person has never existed before. That's why we say, people who say, you know, you have things that are, are still following you. You know, your father in 1950s, they killed someone. So they think is following you. You know, in your family, there is too much witchcraft. So even though you accepted Christ, it is still following you. That's not the truth. This new man, or oh, this born again person, we explain tonight. The Bible says, like, let's read, let's read. Therefore, if any man, we are reading verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's the day you accepted Christ, you entered into, you were baptized into. What made you enter into? That's the word. What is this word? What is this word? What is this word? John chapter um, John chapter 6 verse 63. The Bible says, The body, the flesh, 
Can, can I read there? Let, we explain. Okay, let me read. You read there. In the words that we speak here, Jesus spoke, and the words in this Bible, the Bible says, it's the spirit and it's life. The day you accepted the word, you received the spirit of God, and also you received life. This life is different from the life we used to live. This one is a new, is a brand new life. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was reading 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Bible, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh, be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Which old things are those? I know you aborted five kids. I remember five babies. You are pregnant. You made abortion. Another abortion. Everything. That day you accept Christ. That day you accept this gospel. Everything has passed. The, the, let me read again. The Bible says. Therefore if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. The old things. Which things you know. How you were adulterous. I know. How many men you slept with. I, I, don't, I don't know. How many people you killed. But the day you accept Christ. That's why it's a good news. According to the records of Uganda. They cannot forget that you, you killed someone. According to the records of the world. They, they still remember how many pregnancies. You blacked out. How many babies you killed. They can, they can still recall. Your friends can still say. You aborted twice. They know. They have the record. But. If you accept Christ, you are born again as though you never existed before. Hallelujah. I told you by the names I'm um, Stanley um, from the church known as True Revelation of Christ Mission. It's here in Matuga, a place called Sindo. Please don't forget, come, let's read the word of God, let's study the Bible, let's know who God is, let's know who Christ is, let's know the work of the cross, let's know what Christ came to do for us, and also we know what should we do in our daily life. So Christ did something, also we have to do something. Hallelujah. So the Bible has said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ as you, who is watching right now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Something, if God says new, he means new. This is new. Not rebranded, no. Not maintained, no. Uh, how can I? Renovated, no. This is new life. Brand new life. Brand new creature. Hallelujah. He said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ as you are, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things. All things. All. Don't accept someone who says, you know, your father did this. You should repent for your family. Let's go in the dry, uh, 20 days of dry fasting so that we can cut it. I don't know how those things are said, you know. I don't even want to say them because they are not important. Please, let's continue. Yeah? You are a new creature. So this is a believer. I'm, I'm trying to explain who is a new, who is a believer or who is a born again person. Who is this person? Let's know that we may believe Christ, that we may live a life worthy of our calling. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells you, verse 18, all these things, <clears throat> let's see, no, verse, verse 17, uh, verse 18, we in 2 Corinthians, uh -huh. verse, verse 18 says, all these things, you becoming new, uh, you becoming a new creature, be everything passing away, all things becoming new, they tell you, don't boost in what you do. The Bible says, all these things are of God. This is King James in NIV. I said, all this is from God. You becoming a new person, a spiritual person, being born of the spirit, 
All this, the Bible says, all this is of God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and he gave us the, min the ministry of reconciliation. Then verse 20 tells you who, who you are now. Verse 20 says, we are Christ's ambassadors. Hallelujah. So, as you, before I go into verse 20, because it's in the next part, we, we, should, we are going to know who you are. What should we do? If the Bible says we are ambassadors, how should we use this post? How should we use this privilege of being ambassadors of Christ? Should we just sleep? Do you think ambassadors of Uganda are just in America sleeping? In those different countries just sleeping? No, they are doing something on behalf of their government. If the Bible says in, the, in verse 20, let's read, okay, verse 20. Verse 20, the Bible says, so I want, that's why you should follow all these series. The Bible says, verse 20, now we are ambassadors of Christ. So, before I go any further, if you are an ambassador of Christ, should you just sleep? What should ambassadors of heaven do? That's what we are going to study in the next parts. But today we are explaining who is a born again person, who is a believer. Just as here, because the, the, the title says, the believer's daily life. The believer's daily life. So, who is this believer? This is the person who had the message of the grace of God. That's why it's called good news. When they had, they believed that message. They believed in the sacrificial work of Christ on the cross. Christ died for you. And he rose right now. You must do what he left you to do. So we're going to see what did he leave us to do. So we've seen a believer. Let's read also this person who is born of God. Because we have seen a born again person. You are born again. No one will ever go to heaven if he's not born again. So let's continue to see who is this born again person. Ah, uh, Let's go to John chapter 1 verse 12. John 1 verse 12 the Bible says, But as many as received him, all those who received Christ, how did they receive Christ? Simply let's say all those who received the word of truth. Who is, who is the truth? That's Christ himself. So here the Bible says, let's read NIV. Yet to all who received him, receiving who? Mr. Word, who is, the, who is Christ himself. Hey. Yet all who received him, to those, uh, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So, a born again person is a person who has transferred from being a son of Nathanael, being a son of just Thomas, being a son uh, from being a, a son of John to a son of God. All that believed Christ, we are given a right to become children of God. And that's what we are. First John chapter chapter 3, let's read. We see, we are. This born again person is no longer a, just a local person. He is a new creature. Hallelujah. He is a new creature. He has never existed before. Hallelujah. Actually, let me first read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Let's first read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Hmm? Uh, no, that one. Chapter 2, verse uh, Let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. I wanted chapter 4, verse 20. This new creature, how was this creature created? You have to know the way of your formation. Hallelujah. You have to know how were you made? Hmm? How were you created? Let's read. Okay. Uh, this is where I wanted. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. If the Bible says you are a new creature, what does it mean? Do you know how you were created? Didn't, do you know how you came about to be a new, crea a new creation? Ah, let's go. Read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Just know one thing. In Christ is a big place. Actually, I have a cell record. In Christ. In Christ is a big place. So you were created. We are God's workmanship created in Christ. This new creation was not just created from your mother's womb. No, this one is different. You were created. You were murdered in Christ. That's why you have never existed. That's why there is nothing following you from your family. That's why there, there are no foundations to break. There are no altars to break down. Because for you, you have never existed. You are a new creature. Brand new. You have a brand new life. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, is a new creature. The old has passed away. Because all things are become new. Hallelujah. I was reading Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Just know where you were created. You were not created. So there, are, there is two types of you. There is the fleshy person. And there is the you. Hallelujah. For we are God's workman. Workmanship. Created in Christ to do good works. Which God prepared in advance. For us to do. So you. I'm talking about the born again. This being born again. We know you have your birthday and there is a born again day. So, if you spend seven years in Christ hmm, or in salvation, just know you are seven years old. Yeah, hey, seven years old. If someone say, you know, your grand, 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 grand mom did this, tell them. You know, your grand, 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 grandfather did this, so you have to fast seven days. You have to give this amount of money that God may forgive you. Just tell them one thing. Tell them one thing. My father is God. If you forget that, you know, this is a thing of believing. This is what believers should believe. You are a new creature. The old has passed away. Everything has become new. So you have to live in this new life. Don't miss the next part, please. So, I, I, I told you where you were created. Now, you were created in Christ. I said Ephesians 2.10. You were created in Christ. So, don't, don't keep on remembering the old, old things, you know. I was born in Masaka, so I know my father did this. My family were witch doctors and what, what, what. They used to sacrifice people. That's all useless. Now you are a new person. No one can explain it. That's how Jesus has said. The way you cannot explain where the wind comes from and where it's going. That's the way you cannot explain a spiritual person. Hallelujah. So, I just tell you, I'm still explaining, who is this believer? Because the title is, the believer's day life. So, we have to first know, who is this believer? This is the person who received Christ, who received new life. Who is life? Life is Christ. If you accept Christ, you have accepted life. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. So, Another, the last part I want to explain before we go too into deep things. Uh, who is a Christian? Who is a Christian? You know? Because we are Christians. People say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Who is this Christian? So we've seen who is a believer. The day you believed, you became born again. Brand new person that has never existed. So who is a Christian now? I think we begin from there as we go to the next parts. May God bless you. Let's start from there. Who is a Christian? And uh, there are different types of Christians. So you will know tomorrow they are spiritual babes. Christians, but sorry, we shall not born again people. So we know the next step after being born again, you become a spiritual babe. Then you have to grow. And what makes you grow? So everything don't miss tomorrow. So we've seen who is a born again person we've seen who is a believer so don't forget to, sh to share please keep on sharing to others that they may know this truth uh we 
We are known as True Revelation of Christ Mission Church. It's here in Uganda, a place called Matuga Sindo. Yeah, you just you can just call us using those numbers. I know you're going to be blessed by the truth of Christ from the word of God. So I just encourage you, please, as we go on, just be a friend of your Bible. Just be a friend of this Bible. To know who you are, you must read our manufacturer's manual. You know, you have to read this to know who you are in Christ. Thanks to all those who, are, who have been online with me, who have been on this live. May God bless you so much. I just pray that you share to as many as they can. Tell them tomorrow at 9 exactly, we will we'll be here at this live again. I remain standing. Blessed are you, Sharon.